let's think about it. Uh, when, when you start to do a, a Google search, the first thing you do is usually open up a, a web browser. More sophisticated people sometimes use the, the tool. If you've got a toolbar in the upper right corner, um, people who are on Chrome, of course, just go to the, to the uh, address bar. But each of those is a very different experience, right? So we start with uh, how do you get into Google search? So we think about, you know, for example, on Chrome, a lot of people we find just don't know where the search box is. So they go to www.google.com, even though the one bar allows you to actually do a search there. So they're not using the capability of the tool to start with. So that's one thing we, we start to think about. Um, we then think about, well, when you actually do the search and you get the results back, how do you understand those results? What do you think about those results? So for example, one of the things we know is that a lot of people get very panicked by seeing 20 million results at the top of the page. And I've had people say, what am I going to do with 20 million results? Uh, do I have to look at all of them? No. Relax. <laughs> so a, a part of what I do is just personal counseling. <laughs> uh, and I'm trying to get people to understand that when they, when they see a result on the page, what they're actually doing is they're looking at the rank ordered list of the best results uh, that we can find. And we're putting them in an order that we think is going to be helpful to you. So. A large part of the user experience of search is uh, explaining to people both what they can say, what they can type, how to speak Google-ish, and as well as looking at what comes back and how to interpret that. So I'll give you another example. Um, one thing we see a lot of is people over interpret, let me say it another way, they actually underread the search results. So you have a single result, and the very top is the blue title link with a link to the landing page. Below that in black is the snippet or the abstract of that page. And below that in green is the URL and there's other stuff maybe. Um, but what happens is that uh, the more sophisticated users will actually also look at the green URL and say, oh, that's at nationallygeographic.com. Now I see who owns this page and who's, who wrote it in, in effect. Um, less sophisticated people won't even see that. The other thing we see is, for example, the, the snippet, the, the text that is sort of the summary of the page, is automatically generated by some algorithm in the sky. So what we do actually is if you give the words, the search terms X, Y, and Z, we look inside the text of the landing page to find text in that, in that document that's near or around the search terms that you gave. So every search may generate a different snippet. Why is that important? Well, one of the things it means is that for example, when we generate the ellipsis, the dot 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 that's in the middle of the snippet, you have to be in careful. You have to be careful when you see that to not read it as though a human wrote the dot dot dot. So, when you write a document, when, you, when you're writing a message to me, you might say, "Well, and then we dot 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 carried on." Now, the implicit assumption is when you wrote dot dot dot, you didn't leave out any of the good stuff, right? But the algorithm doesn't know the semantics, the deep semantics of that document. So what it's doing is it's finding little fragments and pitching, sticking them all together, which means that dot, dot, dot actually could be leaving out semantically significant text. So, so as, a, as, a as a good user, as a good searcher, one of the things you have to know is how to actually look at the search results page. So that's a big aspect. 